Anyway. Well, the match was a Texas death match. No, it wasn't. It was billed as a Texas death match. It was what Tony Khan calls a Texas death match, and which is basically the same thing as every other AEW no DQ lazy booking match. Anything goes, there are no rules, and you can do anything you want to do. There's and there's no other goddamn difference in all of their fucking matches. None of the Texas death match rules that were observed for 70 years before this apply well i mean to be fair the rest of the matches on the show after this none of the rules were really an application there <laughs> either when it comes to tag team matches everyone being in the ring in a tornado fashion you see a lot of that well but at least nana got dancing girls can you explain to me why that they make the heels entrances so cool and have the the uh, cast of extras or the singers or the dancers or the rappers or the hippers or the hoppers. And then the baby faces just wander out like fucking putzes. Maybe that's another reason why that they cheer the heels. That's the ultimate example of Mark booking. The idea that they think Swerve is going to be the cool heel, not realizing that cause and effect in 2023, it actually hurts everything if that's the way you present it. Well, I thought they were Nana's dancing girls. I guess Swerve had that entrance, too. The, the attention was on Nana and the dancing girls, not Swerve. I think Nana was the leader of the dancing girls. Hey! Uh, was, no, no, I'm not saying he's one of them. He's like their, uh, <laughs> what's, what's the main dancer, the choreographer of the dancing girls? He was the Tony Basil. That's right. Of the group. All right. <laughs> That's right. And then people love Swerve, and it's Swerve's house, and they like Swerve. And then to avoid being booed out of the building, apparently... Old Hangnail hit the ring with no music or introduction, and they began the fight. And immediately they went to the floor. And within, what well, after they rattled each other off the railing or whatever, within a minute, Hangnail stopped the match completely dead so that he could find a chair and go into the ring, get some duct tape, and then he got a staple gun. And he gets in the ring, and Swerve is having to sell this whole time, and then... <laughs> He puts his hands together and duct tape Swerve's wrist together. And obviously, did, does Swerve look like a, a guy to you that Paige would be able to duct tape his fucking hands together if he wasn't letting him? No. Okay. So then old Hangnail gets a staple gun and staples Swerve's chest. He's stapling him in the titties. Not the nipples. Now, that, that's against the Geneva Convention. And then he gets a format or a piece of paper or whatever, and he staples it to Swerve's arm. Now, meanwhile, Brian, you know what a staple gun looks like. Now, you worked in an office. Of course. Do, do, do you think most of the people know what a staple gun looks like? It's a big metal thing, and you squeeze it, and it's got the thing goes across your fingers, and you squeeze it, and it staples, right? Right. If you're in a fight with a motherfucker, especially if you look like Adam Page and the other motherfucker looks like Swerve Strickland, and you've got a staple gun in your hand, are you going to staple him in the titty or are you going to draw back and punch him in the bridge of the fucking nose with it? But it's a metal object. Yes! That's the idea! He's got brass knuckles on his hand and he's stapling this motherfucker's arm! the fuck and then he stapled his face and swerve is letting him do it and because we know that this is all fake because of the general overall presentation of aew people are sitting there going well this stupid motherfucker is letting this other stupid motherfucker staple his fucking cheek and his titties and <laughs> At that point, somehow he's busted Swerve open also, and Swerve hit a gusher and starts pouring blood. And this is where Paige lays down on his back as Swerve is bending over, bleeding from his head, lays down on his back and opens his mouth so that he can drink Swerve's blood to show how badass he is. And I believe at that point, you know, 
Again, I go back to when Lyndon Johnson said after Cronkite came back from Vietnam, if we've lost Cronkite, we've lost America. I think they've lost the female audience that they might not have had to begin with on that one. And, and they might have lost the network that they potentially might or might not have had off of that one. What, you fucking idiot. Just, he's no better than the plumber or the fucking bank-addicted drug robber. He got more hair, that's it, old Page. Otherwise, he's as stupid and demented and fucking distasteful. So then, he got a barbed wire wrapped chair. But while he was going to find that, because there's one of those lying under the ring at every wrestling event. Whose job is that, to wrap the chair? Well, and the thing is, by the time that they finish doing this, you can tell that the barbed wire is phony because they they take so many bumps in this and so hit each other with the chair wrapped in barbed wire and take the bumps on the boards wrapped in barbed wire and wrap the barbed wire around each other and tie each other up with it that they would be ripped to shreds. And maybe the people in Los Angeles are not familiar with barbed wire. I bet there's a few neighborhoods out there that got some razor wire. But anybody that's ever been within 10 miles of a fucking farm knows that, you know, you would, have, you would look like you were a tomato thrown through a screen door if that barbed wire was legitimate. So all of their wounds mostly appear to be self-inflicted. But nevertheless, then here's how stupid they both are and how Paige, he will never get over if they fucking stick a tube of helium up his ass and inflate him like the Hindenburg, he will never get over because he doesn't know how to be a baby face. He keeps stapling Swerve. So Swerve, the heel, hulks up and doesn't sell the stapling and takes the stapler while it's in Paige's own hand and turns it around and makes the baby face staple his own fucking face. Can I repeat that? He made the baby <laughs> face holding the staple gun staple his own fucking face. So then... Very Three Stooges-esque. Oh, well, and then Mo leveled Curly. Hey! Sweetenly. And then Swerve gets the staple gun and just walks around the ring stapling himself over and over while he's laughing about it. So now they started and killed the staple gun in fucking five minutes. And then Swerve pulled out a concrete block and put it on the apron of the ring and gave Hangnail a Death Valley driver on the apron on top of the block. And he actually did land, not, he caught some of the ropes on the way down to kind of deflect it a little bit, but the motherfucker landed him back of his shoulders first on the block, which is a perfect fucking spinal treatment if you're a professional athlete and expect to use your body for several more years. And then... Swerve gave Hangnail a pile driver on the top edge of the barricade, and then Hangnail got him some color. And this time, I guess because in the past he's been accused of being trepidatious of the blade, he, he went asshole to appetite on this one. Now they're both pouring the blood. And so now at this point, they get in the ring and start doing wrestling moves to each other. <clears throat> and by the way, every once in a while, they will uh, they will let the referee count them. But whether they're shot by the bazooka or run over by the Sherman tank or hammered by the rainbow bread truck or whatever, they always seem to get up by seven or eight. And then finally, Hangnail puts a loop of barbed wire around Swerve and ties his arms, allegedly ties his arms, and that's another giveaway. If that was wire, you don't need to try to tie it. All you got to do is crimp it. It's like a heavy-duty version of your goddamn uh, loaf of bread tie. You crimp it a time or two, it'll stay. 
But he puts the loop around and ties his arms and then body slams him on it. And I wrote, my God, I can't wait for this to be over. But apparently we had to. Then uh, Hangnail gave Swerve a tombstone on the barbed wire chair. And the referee was counting to 10. Of course, Swerve got up at 8 or 9, which was actually about 30 seconds. So now we know that if you get tombstoned on a metal folding chair wrapped in barbed wire by Hangnail Page, you'll be up in the time it takes to watch a TV commercial. And they better hope that nobody watched this at all or they might as well fold their fucking tent. That was my notation at the yeah. time. It was the biggest crowd in months. Yeah, well, there you go. So at the exact wor worst time possible, they draw a crowd to see this fucking abortion. So then Swerve powerbombed the fucking idiot on the barbed wire chair and then hit the double stomp off the top rope on the barbed wire chair on him. And then Swerve brought in a bag of broken glass and poured it on top of Hangnail and then went to the top rope and gave him a 450-degree splash off the top rope. Why would you do that? Why would you willingly hurt yourself to kick the shit out of somebody? It's so fucking stupid and childish. They act like they're in a video game. And none of this is real, and they aren't really fucking human beings. Did you see Dax, old Dax Hardwood, our friend in FTR? <laughs> did you see what he tweeted this morning? I did not. The morning after picture. He, he's got, his head was busted open. I couldn't tell whether, because it was Twitter and it was small, whether it was a stitch or two in there and a black eye and dings on his head. And it was just a close-up of his face, and he was tweeting... You know, I wonder what the the business people in first class on this plane that I'm on, because he's sitting on the plane, think about my face, but that's what we go through for the love of the sport and the yeah, whatever the fuck, right? Positive uplifting. I said, if there's anybody in the goddamn wrestling business in first class, they probably think you ought to find some fucking opponents that can work and a goddamn booker that realizes you're human beings and not video game characters. Because they're all beat up and they're all hurt and they're destroying their body for this fucking richy rich motherfucker to masturbate over his live action toys and they're not smart enough to fucking prevent their goddamn demise at his hands. Because they think this shit's good. I'm not talking about Dax now. I'm talking about these other nitwits. I sympathize with Dax for being in the ring with his tag team partner Ricky Starks and five other goofy motherfuckers that can't work. But anyway, we had broken glass in there now. So then... Broken glass. Everywhere. Everywhere. And mustard. So then Swerve pulled in a barbed wire covered plywood sheet and put it across two chairs. But somehow they ended up on the top rope and Hangnail gave him the fall away slam through all of that, which he went through it as well, and hopped right up and then gave him a power bomb on the board and then the dead eye on the board where he drops the guy head first. And then he wrapped the barbed wire around Swerve's neck and his Swerve stood up because, of course, after naturally, what do you do after you've been fall away slammed off the top rope through a board with barbed wire stuck between two chairs and then power bombed and then dead eyed, but you stagger up fucking moron and then he hit the buckshot lariat on swerve with the wire around swerve's neck and you'll never guess what happened brian swerve was almost counted out but fortunately nana pulled him to the floor where he see he pulled him out and swerve just stood up on his feet after all of that he's like oh fuck i've got barbed wire around my neck and then suddenly Brian Cage, that goddamn fucking giant meat whistle, fucking just hits the ring out of nowhere and attacks Page right in front of the referee and starts kicking the shit out of him. Well, if that's okay, why did he wait till Swerve almost bled to death? Where are Page's friends? 
Well, yeah, well, there you go. He just told on himself. Adam Page does not have one single solitary swing and dick in that locker room that will come out and prevent him from getting filleted by like a fish by three people. They literally just did that with MJF on Dynamite, where he got his ass kicked by Bullet Club Gold and no one came out to save him because he hasn't made a deal with Joe and no one else wants to help him. Once again, Adam Page gets his ass kicked. Where are the Bucks? Where's Omega? Where's anyone? No one comes out. Where's the dork order? Where's his lawnmower? So Cage, it wasn't like Cage interfered and jumped out. He just takes over the match. And then he he gives Page a power bomb and a buckle bomb and an F5 and then pulls out a table. But Page gets the barbed wire after all of those moves and gets up and beats Cage up with the barbed wire. And then here comes Nana. And Nana hits Paige with a chair. And Paige bows up, which you should when the manager uses a gimmick at some point. That's an acceptable spot. Of course, not from a, a corpse, because Paige should have been dead five times already. But then he takes Nana out on the apron and gives him the dead eye off the apron through the fucking table. Why? <sighs> God damn it, if you were writing, number one, personally, like I said, Nana's the only person in this whole equation that I give a shit about. I hope he's okay. Secondly, if you were writing the manager out for months or maybe ever, do that. But it, just to do that, then if he's back on TV in the next six weeks without extensive physical rehabilitation then it just makes Paige look like a weak fuck that he did. The poor Nana, who's... Well, I don't want to reveal Nana's age. He's very young-looking, but he's been around for 20 years. He's 65 years old. Quit now, stop. He's not. From Queens. Oh, come on, he's not 65 years old. He may be from Queens, but he's not 65. But anyway, point being, why would you do that and he's going to walk out on TV in the next week or two? Because Paige is a fucking moron and doesn't know no, anything not. about wrestling or baby facing. He's not going to walk out on TV. He's going to dance out on TV. Well, there you go. And he can't wear a neck brace because that's Roderick Strong's gimmick. So you fucking moron, Paige, by the way. Okay, back to this. Then, as he's done that to Nana, Swerve gets the, the fake fucking cinder block and breaks it over Paige's head from behind. And it just it, it, it explodes into powder. It looks like the old manager threw the powder spot. You can't do that to a real cinder block with a sledgehammer. And then he takes a chain, a big old logging chain, and wrapped it around Paige's neck and threw it over the top turnbuckle and it didn't look as good as the dirty white boy and fucking Horner and Smoky Mountain or the dirty white boy and Tom Pritchard in Continental. But he hung Paige by the neck until the referee counted him out to 10. Technically, Paige was still on his feet. And imagine, Brian, I'll leave you with this one. Imagine if that visual had been reversed and the white cowboy from Virginia had been pulling that chain around the neck of the black rapper from Seattle or wherever he's from up there. No, they could never do that. Well, it was a goddamn difference. You're doing a lynching on goddamn television to add to all this other shit. Oh, uh, again, that was something you got you got by with in the territory days because it was local television and there everybody involved was this, the same complexion. But then, again, what the fuck just ended with a, a lynching of any human being after this? The rest of this distasteful, unprofessional, and incredibly phony yet dangerous bullshit. Were you surprised Adam Page didn't win? I, I was astonished at him. <laughs> the fucking baby face loses the, the blow off. 
Well, is this the blow off? I guess that's the question. What will be the third match? What? AK 47s at 10 paces? What else can they do? Gum Alley. <laughs> I, I don't know what they could do, but the fact that he lost, I can't imagine this is how it ends. The guy went to his house. And then he lost? Is he going to move well, on? Well, yeah, because then, then the guy went to Swerve's house and he got his ass beat. <laughs> Looks like Paige is going to stay home and send his baby to live with Swerve at this point. Do you have the time? Do you know how long it went? Uh, uh, three or four days. <laughs> I don't have it in front of me. I wish I did know, because it did go on a long time. I, it gets I mean, Swerve it, with those fans. It gets Swerve more over, and he's been only getting more and more over. Does nothing for Adam Page, and it does nothing for any audience they don't already have. That's what. That's everything they do prevents them from getting any audience well, they don't already have because this is the sum total of people that will watch bad, phony, silly, gymnastic wrestling in quotation marks well, that's the thing wwe they give you the minimal amount on their television shows but with overarching stories and characters and people they're presenting as stars AEW, you get either just guys working matches or just complete brutality and the question is does this again it's on pay-per-view so you're kind of preaching to the choir in terms of who your audience is for this specific event but does brutality cause people to become wrestling fans or does characters, promos, personalities, star power cause them to become <laughs> pro wrestling fans? Characters, personalities, star power make a large percentage of the fans. There's always going to be somebody that sees something and goes, oh, you know, I got to watch more of this. But the, the, I think the justification in some of these morons minds for doing this is because they go, oh, well, there was Abdullah the Butcher and there was the Sheik and there was all always violence and, you know, Wild Bill Longs and hit people with chairs or whatever. Context matters. Presentation matters. The reason why those things got over with those people in those times was because the fans a could believe the individual that was doing it was doing it. They weren't all smart. They weren't, it wasn't all see-through. It wasn't all obvious. It was not just some buggy whip armed Yahoo that was allowed to come in and wreak havoc and, bust people open or fucking had go crazy. It was people who looked like they fit the part and could carry it off. And it was presented as a serious thing on the television program in the buildup. And it was not overdone week after week and everybody was allowed to do it. And as well, they've lost the plot completely on how to position the guys on their roster and in their matchups instead of just for the Mark fans who want to, oh, golly, I bet that's going to be a great match. And that's going to be, they're going to really work hard to have some emotional investment in wanting to see someone attain something, someone to win and someone to lose. Brian, you're a, bas a baseball fan, right? And bass, yeah. A basketball fan, but mostly baseball. Love I started baseball. to say basketball is what I really see. You're being I smart. love basketball. It's a great movie. No, I love baseball. All right. You love baseball, but we know you like the Mets, right? I love the Mets. Who's your second favorite team? There is no second favorite team. Okay. Well, let me ask you this. You love baseball. You love to watch the Mets play. Absolutely. Okay. Who are the two worst teams in the goddamn league? The worst teams in the league? Yeah. Oh, geez. Uh, well, the Marlins actually had a pretty good year. I'm going uh, division by division. Arizona it, made it to the playoffs. Well, you do, okay, you don't have to know. Who are two crummy teams? Two crummy teams in the past year. The Cardinals uh, had a pretty crummy year, even though traditionally they've been pretty good. 
And uh, I guess you could say the Padres had a very disappointing year. Okay, you love baseball. The Cardinals and the Padres are on TV. You going to skip it or you going to watch it? Depends. It depends on what else is on. But if there's nothing on, I would certainly put it on and have it on in the background. Sure. If something else is on, such as an all-night gas station or a fucking new Denny's opening. Well, if it's like a TV show I want to watch versus a baseball game not involving the Mets, I'll choose the TV show I want to watch. If it's the Mets, I find a way to watch both or I watch the Mets. Yeah, well, the point I'm trying to make is that in any contest or conflict or sporting event or game or match or fight or whatever, most people watch because they want one or the other side or team or entities to win right they don't just watch it because they if you're a baseball fan you don't watch every goddamn game that every major league team plays because it's goddamn baseball you can't i think typically that's right i mean there are fans who will watch a lot of games but i think a lot of fans like their team they watch their team's games they may occasionally watch other teams and of course highlight shows but Day to day, it's about your team. Yeah, so the point is you get people invested in a uh, one side or the other, and that is the foundation of wrestling, is to the reason why the heel babyface dynamic was invented back in the days of the Goldust Trio is because it helps sell tickets when naturally. Ali and Frazier was the biggest you know, event of its time in boxing because Ali was a an incredible polarizing figure, but there was somebody to root for and somebody to root against, depending on which side you were on on both sides. Or any rivalry in sports, or so the University of Kentucky, University of Louisville, it's not just the game they're playing, it's who's playing it and how it's presented. And that's what they're just trying to do. Every goddamn wrestling trope as the kids say it or cliche or angle or deal or finish or uh, plagiarize and you know prostitute every you know wrestling thing that they've seen or heard of or watched on youtube and everybody's allowed to do everything and there's no contextualizing of who you're supposed to really root for and who you're supposed to be against the wwe has all those things Now, people may violate that. They may not really hate Dominic. They'd like to just boo because it's cool. But they're still, they they know whose side they're supposed to be on. They know who they're supposed to want to see win. It makes sense. In the hundred years leading up to when the wrestling business went to shit, you would, you were, pretty much out of business if the people didn't know whose side they were supposed to be on, whose side the wrestlers were each on, and why they were mad at each other. That's And then you could do anything from there. But the, Tony is just, because of his chemical brain makeup that has led to whatever medication he, again, he is on or needs to be on, it's just all about the, oh my God, these matches and these moves and this go, oh my God, it'll be so great, 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 great. And he's going to kill everybody. Not a, I'm not just talking about business-wise, I'm talking about physically. Well, of course, Jim, yeah. not everyone thought of it what you thought of it. I did hear from a lot of people who did like it. A lot of people thought it was the most brutal match in wrestling history, but I guess this will... It was brutal, all right. Here's one example. Dave Meltzer tweeted out last night. I'm sure he did. Swerve won the death match after a cinder block shot and hanging him with a chain. This would have been remembered as an all-time classic if if it ended without the interference. Maybe it will be, even with. So do you think Brian Cage's interference took away from this match's status as an all-time classic? Boy, how how do I answer that question? No, this match would have been an all-time stinker regardless, but Cage's, yes, it did take it down even a further notch. How how low can you go with that stupid business in front of the referee and et cetera? But again, what... At some point, somebody has to 
try to be the adult in the room and tell these children, and I'm not talking about the world's oldest teenager, Dave Meltzer. I'm talking about somebody that that has got to go in there and say, look, you can't keep doing this shit. It's ridiculous. You're killing the business not only for for your own company, but for future generations. What's left to do? It's all phony and silly. It makes no sense. There's no control here. There's no context. And it's unprofessional, and you're going to get kicked off television doing this shit sooner or later. All of those things. But nobody will, because Tony's Richie Rich, and he's not used to Cadbury telling him no when he wants a second poached egg. Fuck. Well, that was a review of Swerve versus Page at AEW Full Gear, and uh, I know this is your show, but this is probably around the time we should transition to a sponsor. No, I don't. I'm not in the mood. To, I'm not in the mood to do a goddamn commercial either. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We're going to uh, make note of a few. Pa- I, hold on, let me throw the rest of the pay-per-view notes across the room. No, no. We're going to no. make note. Of, we're going to make note. Come on. Of a say. Wait a minute. Hold on now. You hear that? I hear lawnmowers. No, sirens. Oh, no. Fire engine coming down the road. I heard you're going to tear up your boots. Going down the road. They're helping out. 